Hi everyone, welcome back to our unit on the law of sines and cosines. Now, as we said before, laws of sines and cosines are used to solve oblique triangles. They can also be used to solve right triangles, but we're focusing on oblique triangles at this point. If it's a right triangle, we have Sokotoa, we have the Pythagorean theorem to fall back on. But law of cosines and law of sines are two very helpful formulas used in two different scenarios. Law of sines gets used for angle side angle, angle angle side, and sometimes side side angle. Now, here's the catch though side side angle. That's the ambiguous case. And like I've been saying, we're going to hold off on that for now. We'll come back to it later. Now, here's your formula for law of sines A over sine of A equals B over sine of B equals C over sine of C. Now, we can also flip each of those fractions and put the angles on top if it's the angles that we're looking for. It makes our job just a little bit easier. Law of cosines, on the other hand, gets used for side angle side or side side side. Uh, if you have side angle side, you want to find that third side first and then find the smallest angle using the law of sines. We only want to use law of cosines once per problem because as we can see, these are pretty messy formulas and we like to avoid them if we can. If we have to use them, we use them, but we don't want to use them any more than we actually have to. So if we have side angle side, we find the third side, and then we find the smallest angle. Now remember, the smallest angle is going to be opposite the smallest side. Now if we have side side side, we got all three sides, all we have to find are angles. If we're using law of cosines, we want to find the largest angle first. And then from there, it doesn't matter where we go. We can solve either of the remaining two angles and then just use the fact that the angles have to sum up to 180 degrees in order to find that third angle. Um, for angles, or excuse me, for law of sines, you notice that I don't have anything like this because it doesn't really matter with law of sines. With law of sines, there's only going to be one thing that you can find based on the given information. Find that item and then find some other stuff. Okay, so let's look at a story problem. Now, the trouble that a lot of students have with story problems is they don't really know where to begin. Now, what it's all going to come down to is a picture. Okay, use your imagination and draw a little picture. So on a map, Orlando is 178 millimeters due south, straight down. So think about like you, you, at some point in some social studies class, you learned about this thing called the compass rose. You know, north is up, south is down, east is to the right, west is to the left. So Orlando, I'm going to label that with the O, is 178 millimeters due south of Niagara Falls. Denver, that's over here is 273 millimeters from Orlando and 235 millimeters from Niagara Falls. They want us to find the bearing of Denver from Orlando. So what they're asking us to find is this angle right here. That's what they want us to find out. Okay. Now, anytime they ask for a bearing, that's just a fancy map word for finding angles. Um, so the catch is we have all three sides of this triangle and we're looking for the angles. And I drop my marker, excuse me. There we go. Now, um, we want to find this angle. Now, the catch is we have side, side, side. So that means we're going to start with law of cosines. Now, the rule with cosines is we have to find the largest angle first. So if I look at these three sides, the largest angle is going to be N. So I'm going to look for the angle at Niagara Falls first. Once I have that angle, then I can use law of sines to come back and find this guy. So let's start with this. We use law of cosines to find that angle. So I have D for Denver, and opposite that angle has to be the same letter for that opposite side. I have N for Niagara Falls, opposite that letter, that vertex, has to be a lowercase n for this side. And then I have Orlando down here, and opposite Orlando is the 235 millimeter side, also labeled with an O, a lowercase o. So I'm going to use this formula, but with these letters. So the first thing I want to find is angle N. So I know that the cosine of angle N is going to be equal to, let's see, that'll be D squared plus O squared minus N squared all over 2 times d times o. Now I'm going to take each of these measures and sum them in. So the cosine of n 
is our D is 178 squared plus O is 235 squared minus our N is 273 squared. All over 2 times D is 178 times our, what was that, uh, O, which is 235. Okay, now here's the catch. Before we go run into the calculator to type this all in, we need to keep in mind order of operations. This division bar, yeah, it means divide, but it also groups the entire top all gets grouped together and the entire bottom all gets grouped together. If we skip that step, we will get a wrong answer. Okay, so it's really, really important that when we go to the calculator, we type those parentheses all where they need to be. So I grab my calculator right here on my phone and I do, I open a set of parentheses and I type 178 squared plus 235 squared minus 273 squared. And I put that all in a set of parentheses. Okay, just like that. Okay, then I wanna divide, again in parentheses, two times 178 times 235. And I close those parentheses. Okay, so if I scroll back through, you can see. Okay, everything is there just as it was. Parentheses around the top, divided by parentheses around the bottom. Okay. Press equals, and we get this. Okay, now that's a pretty crazy number to get. Okay, so here's what I need to do. I have to keep in mind that this is cosine of n. So cosine of n is approximately 0 0.1479. Okay, but I don't want the cosine of n. I want the actual angle itself. So what I'm going to do is take the inverse cosine on both sides. Okay, so we go to the calculator once again, okay, and right above the cosine button, we can see inverse cosine. So we press second and then the cosine button. Now I want this number and I don't want to have to type it all again. So what I can do is just press second and then down here above the negative, we see A N S. Okay, we push that, we get whatever the last answer was. Okay, now we close those parentheses, we have inverse cosine of that answer. Now remember, any time you're going to use sine, cosine, or tangent on a calculator, you want to make 100% certain that you are in the correct mode. So I press mode right here. Okay, I can see down here I have the option to be in degree or radian mode. Now, I want to make sure I'm in degree mode because we're working with degree angles, hit enter, okay, and then back to the main screen, and we get this, about 81.5 degrees. So N is about 81.5 degrees, right here. Now here's the catch though, I don't want that angle, that's not my final answer, that's a step along the way. So I have to use this in order to find angle O. Okay, now, once we have one angle, we don't want to use law of cosines any more than we have to. So we're going to switch over to law of sines. So I have N and I have angle N and I have side N. I have one angle O. So I'm going to say the sine of angle O over the length of side O is 235 equals, let's see, I have N at 273 and I have n at 80 or angle n at 81.5. So the sine of 81.5 degrees over side n is 273. Now 
this is what I want. That angle is what I want to get by itself. So it's being divided by 235 degrees. So I'm going to multiply, excuse me, 235 millimeters. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 235. Okay. These will cancel. And I'll have the sine of angle O is equal to 235 times the sine of 81.5 degrees all over 273. Okay, time to go back to the calculator. Okay, because now I don't want the sine of O, I want the inverse, excuse me, I just want the angle itself. So I have to take the inverse sine. So O is going to be equal to the inverse sine of 235 times the sine of 81.5 degrees all over 273. Okay, so we go to the calculator and we type second sine, let's get the inverse sine, 235 times the sine of 81.5, close parentheses, cl um, divided by 273, close parentheses. Okay, so take a look at what we have. We have the inverse sine, okay, on the top is, in, is we have 235 times the sine of 81.5, then we divide that by 273, okay, and we close the parentheses for that inverse sine, we're still in degree mode, press equals, and we get about 58.36 degrees. Okay, so we'll just call it 58.4 degrees. Okay, now that is this angle. Now they want us to give a bearing. So a bearing is a little bit of a description. Okay, so that angle is from the north and it's leaning to the left. Well, if we remember from our compass rows up here, that's west. So we can say the bearing is 58 Point four degrees northwest, and there we go. So, however the information is presented to you, draw a little picture. Sometimes a little nice enough to give a little picture for you, but they give you the picture, label all the information on it, figure out what setup you have. From this information, we can see pretty clearly we have side, side, side. Since we have side, 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 we know we're going to use law of cosines to find that largest angle first. Now, the only problem is that's not the angle that we actually need. Okay, that's one of the angles on the picture, but it's not the one that what they want for our final answer. So once we have this angle, then we shift over to law of sines and we use that law of sines to find the answer that we really need. And then we interpret that answer in the context of the problem. Okay, I hope this helps guys. If you have any more questions, email me or hit me through the chat feature on Teams one way or another, make sure you get your questions answered. All right. Good luck, guys.